Hey guys, it's time for another Tip Tuesday. This week's Tip Tuesday is going to be all about jacks and leveling. It can be really confusing, it can be a little bit overwhelming to be honest with you. And me personally being an avid camper, I have seen at least probably six times where people have actually bent their stabilizer jacks because they're trying to use them to level their camper. So what I've done is I've grabbed Chad, as usual, not the expert, just a camper. I've grabbed Chad. Chad's gonna walk us through manual stabilizer jacks, automatic stabilizer jacks, auto leveling, yep. and leveling jacks, right? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna let Chad take it away. I'm gonna shut up. So Chad, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna start off right here in this little hideout 17 foot single axle travel trailer. Typically, these will come standard with manual jacks. And Greer, if you'll take a look at what's underneath the camper there, those are typically on all four corners and you can see they're just a manual jack or what we call a, a, a cross jack. So basically what you do is they come with the handle that would allow you to raise and lower these stabilizer jacks. We'll just take some pressure off of this camper just kind of show you how it works. Now, this is just designed to stabilize the camper. It is not intended to elevate it, lift it. Some folks tend to put too much pressure on these levelers and it, that can cause some damage underneath the camper itself because of the weight of the camper. So basically how you wanna utilize these, if you don't have, you would wanna purchase some of those plastic um, support blocks. You always want something between the bottom of your level jack and the ground itself for settling. And we do sell those up at our service facility and service facilities and campgrounds across the United States offer those as well. But you can but, also, I mean, you can use wood blocks and stuff you if you use, need to, right? Yeah, you it's basically just getting something in between the, the jack and the ground, right? Yes, sir. Just okay. for settling, supporting. You don't want these jacks to settle down into a grassy, gravelly area. In pavement, it gets hot during the summertime. They'll sink into the pavement. Concrete, they'll have a tendency to slide sometimes and just in movement of the camper. So it's good to have something between this and the element that you're, you're stabilizing on. So the manual handle, basically what you wanna do is you just wanna crank this down, get to your surface, make sure it's just snug where it's tight. Now, a lot of folks aren't fans of doing this manually, going around the RV four times and cranking them down, especially depending on the train that you might be on. It may be elevated in the front, lower to the ground in the back. So what they'll do is they'll take a half inch socket and drill with them and simply run it up, run it back down. So don't let that be a discouraging thing that it's a manual stabilizer. Yeah, because, uh, not to interrupt, but I mean, yes, you think about it, almost everybody's got a drill and a socket. Absolutely. So the time you took to do that, it's actually, in my opinion, because I've always had electric, it's mm -hmm. actually faster what you just did. Because the electric, you know, it's kind of... Rrr, rrr, absolutely. Rrr, rrr, but that's much faster and easier, right? Yeah, absolutely. Throw so, it in your in your storage compartment, boom, yeah. you're good to go. Then you have the drill for anything else. You need to change the bit out for anything that you want to hang in your camper or right. anything that you're hanging around the campsite itself, lights, and et cetera. Okay, so show us an electric one now. Sure. Electric stabilizer, right? Electric stabilizer, okay. this is correct. So directly behind rear here, you'll see we're at the Passport and the Passport itself offers the electric stabilizer jacks. And you see they look much different than the cross jacks that we've seen underneath the hideout, where they actually come out at an angle and they drop down from underneath the frame of the camper itself. Again, same concept, just stabilizing the RV itself, not leveling. Um, that stabilization, the difference between the two, and why you'll find this is most common on your electric sides, is the stabilizer jacks, the cross jacks, the more we require of them to come down, we're taking uh, or adding mobility to that camper. So if you did have a deep train on this type of a jack, what you'd wanna do is put a much larger block so we're requiring less of that to come down. A great example that was shown to me by one of our sales reps here one time was that you take the stabilizer jack that we just um, demoed and you extend it completely, it's just like if I'm standing here vertically, someone comes along and pushes me, there's gonna be some sway. But if I'm standing like this, then it's virtually impossible to knock me from one side to the other in comparison to that. Same thing that's going on here. It's just a wider stance, electric jacks out of convenience. Um, they are rather slow as Dan alluded to a few moments ago in regards to them coming down, but they do will come, they do come down independently. They're working on the same rod as they're coming down, but if this, this jack were to touch the ground before the jack on the opposite side does, then it'll stop and the other side will continue to come down until it touches. That's where it becomes confusing to a lot of our campers that this is some type of a leveling system. 
there's just an all thread that runs between these two jacks and those jacks are running down that all thread. And then once this stops, then this will continue to run down that thread until it touches off on the ground too. Again, same recommendation. You're gonna to wanna to put something between the foot pad of this jack and the surface that you're um, stabilizing yourself on. And again, those are just stabilizing. Like you gotta really, really stress that point. Really those are that. not meant for leveling. Because I have seen some people throw their level in the camper and then they, they're pushing the button yeah. and they're trying to level it up. Yeah. Big no-no. In, in a campground, with these particular RVs, when you get onto your spot, you're gonna to wanna to find the most level spot just when you pull up and set. If it means dropping a couple of boards underneath the tires and such, when you do that to get it level, then once you get it leveled in that way, then you're gonna drop those down to stabilize where you are, okay? Yep. Um, but you're right, I've seen customers many years up in the campground try using these stabilizer jacks, they realize they're a little off, so they're gonna try and lift the RV to slide that last little piece of wood underneath the tire and it just totally wrecks these stabilizer jacks, causes damage up underneath under the frame and those types of things. So again, can't stress enough, these are just stabilizers to take any sway or any rock out of this RV from just going in and out and over the course of your weekend, walking front to back and, and everything else. So um, just stabilizers only. Now, there's three different types of applications in regards to um, operating these. Um, in some of our introductory level uh, RVs, such as the hideout, um, the larger hideouts to offer electric stabilizer jacks. The button is located directly over the jack on the door side. Uh, some manufacturers choose to put the uh, electric buttons on the opposite side, on the off door side, if you will. Um, this particular product in the Passport, they put it in a convenience center up front in one of the storage compartments. And there's simple toggle switches, it's a extend and retract. Uh, another thing that I recommend as well is that before you run your slide out out, level your RV, stabilize the RV, then run the slide out out on a stabilized RV. Typically, if we have that 37, 34 inch on average slide out, then we run that out first before we set our stabilizer jacks. But what happens? We've got weight on that opposite side. We've already kind of knocked that out of alignment. Yep. And a lot of folks will put extra stress on the opposite side jack to compensate for that. Well, all that can be eliminated by just it's leveling the leveling the RV first, putting the stabilizer jacks down before you open it up. Just another little tip to think about. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so now show us a leveling jack. Okay. So okay. typically what you'll find is uh, on our much heavier fifth wheels, obviously, we're going from a unit that's weighing right around 5,600 pounds, one we just demoed a few moments ago, just around 3,000 pounds, to something that's in that 14,000 and up range as far as the weight goes. So stabilizing is just as necess necessary as we've seen in the others as well. And these are offered in hydraulic auto level systems. So if you see these, none of these uh, um, have any uh, mechanics to them in regards to manually um, lowering or raising these. They'll run through a hydraulic pump up front. Um, there's a simple button that you push and these six point level up system, three on either side, one in front of the axles, one behind the axles, and of course the ones up front that lift the fifth wheel on and off of your vehicle, um, will then operate to a situation where the front jacks will stabilize themselves first, raise or lower to get you to that, that starting point of uh, zero degrees, and then the rest of these will come down and they'll settle the camper. Now sometimes, um, these will have the ability to raise the right side over the left side um, because of the terrain that we're on. It has the strength to do that and the power to do that. Um, we had a unit that was in the showroom a couple weeks ago that had the power jacks uh, like this, the leveling system, and it actually lifted the tires up off of the ground. Just by, you know, a little bit, but it was a necessity to get it leveled to where it was setting. But here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to use these jacks for safety purposes to lift our RV to try to change out a tire or something like that. That is not what they are designed to do. Even though they have the power to lift, that is not its intention. Its intention is to level the unit, self-level the unit for your convenience because of the weight of the RV itself. Uh, we still, even with these jacks here and with those big foot pads, we want to put something between the surface we're leveling on and the foot pad of the auto level jack itself. Okay, perfect. Not close, now we'll close it out. That was awesome. Okay, you killed it. Yeah.
Okay, guys, as I said, I always try to grab an expert. Chad, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, here's something else I want to throw in there, and I think you'll agree with me on this. All that can still seem overwhelming, and especially when you get a brand new camper, you've got buttons and knobs and switches and dials and everything else. No matter where you buy your camper from, they should provide you an orientation. I can always just speak to here. Right. Now, something we do, and I went through it when I bought my first camper here, is we have an orientation. So right. it is a complete walkthrough of the camper. They should explain to you in great detail the fact that those are either stabilizing jacks or they're leveling jacks and how they should operate. So uh, I know here, my first time, I don't know if you remember, I wore a freaking GoPro on my head, a little dorky GoPro, and I recorded the whole thing so I could go back and watch right. it. But ask for that no matter where you buy your RV because the last thing you want is to be to campground and tear one of your stabilizer jacks up or just do it wrong and, and wreck your system, right? Yes, correct, yeah. All right, well, buddy, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to grab you. Guys, if you have more questions about the stuff we talked to, let us know, and I'll grab Chad here, and we can demo stuff, we can do whatever you need. But uh, as always, thanks, and see you next Tuesday.